and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and on this video we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. First off, thank you so much for being patient during this time of vacationing for our people. I know that a little R&R &R was just what a lot of us needed to finish the year strong, which is exactly what we intend to do. I'll be scheduling two more videos this week, a Mythic Plays video on Thursday and a live Q&A on Friday. I'll need a good bit of interaction for both of those, so be on the lookout and come ready to have some fun. Now we only have new updates for Steam Watchers, Hell of the Last Saga, Six Siege, the board game, and a new upcoming attraction for Mythic Games, Monster Apocalypse. So let's get to it. For Steam Watchers this week, many of you have already received your copy of Steam Watchers and we're thrilled as the reception has thus far been very good. For our backers in North America, the last information we've been given on an estimated date for the 40-foot container's arrival in port is September 3rd, but please understand that this is just an estimate. As the game has been shipped to many backers, we have had questions on BGG, Discord, and or Facebook, and we try to answer them. In the description below, you'll find a link to an online living FAQ for you to peruse. It will be updated and we'll clarify some rule nitpicks. Now, we'll do our best to maintain it as much as possible, but go check it out. For Hell the Last Saga, a good part of the team was on vacation during August as they preferred to organize themselves that way instead of spreading resources across the whole summer. But everyone is back and ready for the last sprint. First off, new people have joined our ranks. Mirat Selibi, who started at Rackham Confrontations Game System and worked at Ankama on Crowsmaster Arena, will help us finalize the last scenarios. And Michael Monnier, who has been with us for a long time as an ambassador, will oversee quality control and processing the user feedback and playtesting. With this new reinforcement of staff, the pace will now begin to accelerate a bit. Now, we did promise during the last update to answer all the questions you have left in the comments. In summary, there were only a few questions which seemed to revolve around three main topics. The price of shipping, the end of the pledge manager and the beginning of production, and a desire for pictures of the components in production. Concerning the price of shipping, David had allowed himself a bit of a tragic comical note about the insane increase in shipping prices. This led some of you to deduce that we were going to ask you to pay more for shipping. This is not the case. We were simply mentioning the difficulties that we were experiencing in finding a partner or a slot at the right price and in the most reasonable time frame. Many of our backers who are committed to many other projects have probably already been warned about this problem. But to those who are new to the Kickstarter process, we want to invite you to take a look at this graph, which represents the fluctuations of the freight rate index over the last year. It can be consulted at any time at fbx.freightos.com. It is a global indicator which affects all activities that rely on transport from China. Since May 2020, the date of our campaign, this index has unfortunately experienced an exceptional and unexpected increase, raising the cost of transport by a multiple of 10. Concerning the end of the pledge manager and the beginning of our production, our current schedule is to close the pledge manager at the end of November and start production in December. Now, some of you have been asking for pictures of the components in production. For now, we're sharing with you mainly pictures of the material for printing and illustrations, but rest assured, as we do with all of our projects, we'll show you the components as they're produced, in order from miniatures, then to the white samples, and then to the insert and the deluxe insert. The composition of the inserts is so dependent on the number and exact placement of the components that they must come last. But feel free to continue asking questions in the comments. David Rocoto and I will continue to answer them as quickly as we can. 
For Six Seeds this week, we're starting a series of three articles on our website in which we'll cover the gameplay-related expansions that are available for Six Siege, the board game. Two articles will tackle the operators from either side and what they bring to the roster. A third will be dedicated to the map packs. These expansions allow you to have your operators evolve in new game environments and will change your choices as far as team building goes. The development of the game was made in several steps, and during the first months of development, only 10 defenders were available, but they were thought out and balanced in their own little bubble. But then, we increased the pools by 20 operators per team, and we still wanted to have that coherence and consistency among operators, so we balanced and tuned all 60 at the same time. Six Siege the board game has you choose five operators from 30. This choice should be a dilemma, as all operators are as interesting as the next. We wanted you to take chances and risks while composing your team, a game within the game, so to speak. Something that is brought by owning one or more operator expansions is a wider panel as far as stamina goes. You can choose an operator with six stamina from a pool of three, among which Clash and her shield exist, or an operator with a stamina of four, and thus a run value of five, from nine operators rather than just two. This allows you to form more varied teams with multiple run stats and armor levels. So you can tailor your team to a particular behavior for a particular environment. You can also picture the expansions as kind of adding operators with redundant game mechanisms or induced strategies to help cement a certain strategy like slowing down the opponent, neutralizing an area, supporting other operators, and so on, or to add new mechanics that pertain to a specific operator which will change the game for your opponent. For example, if you want to find an alternate to Doc or Rook, or have them twice, so to speak, you can think about Thunderbird. A very solid team can be held with Rook and other six stamina operators like Myra, Echo, or Maestro. Or, do you want more means to locate opposing operators? Pulse is not the only one who can handle the job. Alibi, Maestro, Valkyrie, Echo, Mozzie, or even Caviera can do this. That said, each operator brings their own flair to the game. Valkyrie and Maestro both have cameras, but they're very different to handle. If you want to slow the attackers in the raid, you can hinder them with gadgets from the likes of Castle or Bandit, or slow them down by having to spend actions with Jaeger or Capkin. Numerous operators from the expansions can prevent an assault or slow it down, but each one will have a signature. Malusi slows movement. Frost or Goyo makes skirting around the obstacle a risky endeavor. Lesion, Kaid, and Aruni cover certain areas of the game, while Ela will be a threat the entire game. Simply put, an operator can change the entire game by their sheer presence or if their gadgets stay around. Mute or Smoke can tip the game a certain way for sure, but Wamai, Oryx, and Caviera, each in their own fashion, create other kinds of trouble for your opponent. The operators you choose constitute a unique strategic choice on your part, and your opponent has to take that into account. The larger your roster, the more focused or wide-ranging your teams can be. A team with multiple stamina values, multiple orange destroy levels, and synergistic gadgets that blend into a glass cannon build or a more solid approach is the choice you must make in Six Siege the Board Game. Mythic Games and Privateer Press announced last Thursday the co-production of a new Monster Apocalypse big box product range that will be coming to Kickstarter before the end of the year. The new range will include a two-player core box, a multiplayer expansion that allows co-op and competitive play for up to four players, and multiple add-ons that will offer more monster characters, units, and buildings to expand a player's collection. The core box will contain no less than eight classic Monster Apocalypse miniatures representing four different factions, Guard, Planet Eaters, Lords of Cthulhu, 
and pterosaurs, several unit miniatures, awesome plastic building miniatures, a double-sided game board, and all the dice and tokens needed to play solo, two-player co-op, and two-player competitive games. The multiplayer expansion, which will be available as an add-on or part of a base pledge, will bring three- and four-player co-op and competitive games to Monster Apocalypse for the first time with an extra-large double-sided game board designed for multiplayer games. The expansion will also include enough dice and accessories to add two more players, as well as five all-new Apex monsters, which are mighty evolutions of some of the most famous characters in Monster Apocalypse. The Apex monsters include Defender Extreme, Insatiable Yashith, Arctic Armodax, Mega Gorghadra, <laughs> I'm murdering these names, and Nightmare Galamaxis. Monster Apocalypse creator and privateer press owner Matt Wilson says, Mythic Games produces the most incredible board games on the tabletop, and they also run the most fantastic Kickstarter campaigns. Now they've brought their expertise and quality to this new range for Monster Apocalypse, reimagining it as an authentic board game that we know will excite thousands of new players who have not experienced Monster Apocalypse as a hobby game. Monster Apocalypse will launch on Kickstarter this fall with an expected delivery date of late 2022. If you want to learn more about the Monster Apocalypse Kickstarter project, visit mythicgames.net backslash kickstarter. Now remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you have any questions or just to see what he might spoil. But if, even if he doesn't spoil anything, it's usually a pretty fun time. So come check it out. That's it for this week, though. Stay safe. Play some games while you're at it, and we'll see you on the flip side. Take care.